Good morning or good afternoon, depending on uh, what part of the country you're in joining us today. Welcome to Breastfeeding 101, hosted by Motherhood Uncovered. We are so excited that you're here with us. This is actually our debut event. So I thought I would take just a second and tell you a little bit about what is Motherhood Uncovered and who are the people behind it. So I am Sarah Wells, CEO and founder of Sarah Wells Breast Pump Bags, and I joined forces with Nicole from Nisoware Nursing Bras to bring you this collaboration. And our goal really, um, our mutual goal, is to connect expecting and new moms with experts that can share straightforward, helpful information on breastfeeding and more. I think we really want to try to cover a wide range of topics through this series that moms want to hear about and maybe don't always talk about, and we want to bring you the best experts to do that. To tell you just a little bit more about myself, uh, I'm actually going to switch away from my slide and put it on video so you can see my face. Hello. Hopefully everybody can see me. <laughs> uh, again, I'm Sarah Wells, CEO and founder of Sarah Wells Breast Pump Bags. And I thought I would just tell you a tiny bit about my business and the journey that I've been on with this. So I actually um, started this small business idea, the concept for it, came to me when I was ex an exclusively pumping mom and went back to work after maternity leave to a job as executive director of a national nonprofit organization here in the D.C. area. And uh, my first week back, you could find me looking a little bit like a pack mule, uh, schlepping at least two bags, if not three or four, a lunch bag, something for my electronics, uh, um, you know, and definitely my pump and then anything else that I had to, to bring with me, my purse, of course. And in that, that, the pump actually was inside of what I would consider a pretty ugly bag. Probably most of you know which one I'm referring to, the one that equipment often comes with. And I like to, I'm a self-proclaimed sort of mominista, if you will, and enjoy my handbags and shoes, probably much to my husband's chagrin. And I really didn't like both the fashion and styling of that bag, and I didn't like that there was no real all-in-one functionality that I had to carry so many. So uh, what started as kind of a, a general idea that there's got to be a better way to carry a breast pump ended up over the course of two years of a journey starting to form a small business it turned into Sarah Wells Breast Pump Bags. And in November of 2013, I publicly launched and have been um, really enjoying being out there in the community of moms and talking to them about my product, but also about all the issues that matter to them. So this has been a really exciting time. Um, advocacy for, for women and moms has been something that's always been near and dear to my heart. So I'm particularly excited to be working with Nicole on this motherhood uncovered effort. So without further ado, I will introduce my motherhood uncovered collaborator, uh, Nicole from Nisoware Nursing Bras. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Zollner, and um, thank you for being here today. I am the president and founder of Nizoware Nursing Bras, as Sarah said. Thank you, Sarah. And um, we have the only nursing bra with a patented pocket. So that's how we're a little bit different. And our pocket holds uh, removable molded pads, which is unique, and that gives moms a little um, lining if they want it. Uh, for, cover up your uh, nipples or nursing pads or um, any kind of small leaks that you might have. It also gives you some great shape, but it also has the ability to take it out if you don't want them in or if they get wet and you want to replace them. Uh, our pocket also holds a warm cool pack, which is also great for moms who may have um, breastfeeding discomfort, which uh, we might talk about a little bit today. Um, the idea came for Nizaware uh, when I was breastfeeding my son and his latch looked great from the outside, um, but come to find out a few days later that uh, his tongue was hitting the tip of my nipple, and that made that um, quite painful, and also uh, had my nipple bleeding and cracked. So luckily I had a lactation consultant friend who came to my house, came to my rescue, I should say, and she took one look at me and said, here's your problem, here's how you fix it, and she got us on the right track. Um, being a first-time mom, I really had no idea <laughs> what this breastfeeding thing was about, as um, I'm sure many people don't. So I'm, I'm so excited to um, be working with Sarah and um, to be bringing uh, Motherhood Uncovered out, because a lot of times us moms, we just don't talk about a lot of things out loud. And, um, and, and so, so I'm really excited about this. I hope you guys are too. Um, Without further ado, I, I, I want to introduce our guest speaker that we have today uh, for Breastfeeding 101. She is uh, the amazing Betsy Bush, very knowledgeable lactation consultant who has a nursing doctorate, 
a Bachelor of Science in Biological Psychology, and she has earned the gold standard in breastfeeding education by becoming an international board certified lactation consultant, and she has 13 years of hands-on experience in maternal and child health, you guys. So this is, um, this is so great. She's so knowledgeable about this. Um, she's also a member of the International and United States Lactation Consultants Association and the Colorado Breastfeeding Co Coalition, the Food and Allergy Anaphylaxis Network, and the Boulder Allergy Kids. So thank you so much, Betsy, for being with us today um, and sharing your knowledge and your expertise. And we are, we are so happy and honored to have you. Well, great. It's um, wonderful to be here with you, Nicole and Sarah, and all of you who are joining us today. Um, I don't know. I guess we should just jump in and get started. Yeah, I, I, there's so much to learn about um, breastfeeding. So, so what's the best place to start for these moms who are kind of maybe a little nervous or um, anticipating this? Yeah, so, you know, there's I could talk for hours about <laughs> breastfeeding, but we'll try to keep it short and sweet today. I think the real key is getting a good start to breastfeeding, and so really making, um, you know, breastfeeding um, the priority and just some ins and outs of breastfeeding we'll cover here um, in the next several minutes. Um, I first just want to talk about some keys to success that I think can really um, create environment and set you up for breastfeeding success. So the first thing, as I said, was make breastfeeding a priority the first few weeks. Um, it really needs to be sort of your main goal and I want you to line up, you know, um, people, support people to help feed you and take help take care of other um, baby care um, issues so that you can focus mainly on feeding. The other thing that I would say is um, delay visitors. So um, unless you have people there who um, are going to actually be there to help you and support you, I think it's really important to um, delay visitors for the first couple weeks. One thing I think that we get caught up in is wanting to respond and feel obligated um, to answering texts and emails that come through and phone calls. And um, what I usually recommend to mamas is when they send out sort of their online birth announcement with the announcement of the birth and, and what's gone and telling everyone that's okay, that they include a statement that says something like, we are looking forward to having you meet our little one once we have a chance to get acquainted as a family. This automatically lets people know that you value your family time as well as their role in your lives. So I think that that's really important. You could also say something like, you know, we will, we apologize for not being able to respond uh, to every text or email, but we will get back with you and be in touch with you um, in a couple weeks once we, you know, sort of adjust to, to life with our little one. The other thing you may have heard um, the phrase calm baby equals, or calm mama equals calm baby. And I do think there is some truth to this. It's hard to imagine how such a tiny person can create such chaos. So it really helps to have your house organized with some baby stations, some well stocked changing and feeding stations on each floor. And by also keeping your house calm with soothing music, peaceful lighting, this helps your baby from becoming overstimulated and it helps keep you calm and relaxed, all of which helps promote breastfeeding. So those are just some basic tips that you may not hear um, when you take a breastfeeding class, but I think are really important um, in sort of setting up a good context for uh, successful breastfeeding those first couple weeks. That's great, Betsy. Thank you so much. I, I love that the email that you, you say it right out there and I think it sounds so eloquent and, and I, I wish I would have had that. Um, one thing that we hear a lot about is the skin to skin contact and um, I don't really, we don't hear why it's important necessarily but I know that when I had just had my son I feel like it was immediately after he came out, but um, the nurse just ripped my gown down and kind of threw him on my chest, and I was just like, "Whoa, okay," you know. And and then it was weird, yeah. right? And so, can you just explain to us that this might happen and and why and what's the importance of of it? Sure. Well, hopefully, not too many moms will have their nightgown <laughs> ripped down. That sounds maybe a little bit aggressive. Um, and it's funny because our sons are similar ages, but I remember almost ten years ago now when they handed me my son. He was so bundled up, I was scared to un really oh. unwrap him the whole time you were in the hospital. But a lot has changed in the last 10 years have really given us some great um, research showing us the short and long-term benefits of skin to skin. Um, 
so we we know that it's important not just in the first hour after birth um, but also in the days and weeks to follow and one of the benefits is that um, it can promote breastfeeding really good breastfeeding your baby uses all its senses to breastfeed it hears your voice feels your skin uses its legs and arms to balance and stabilize it sees your darkened areola and nipple that's why they get dark it smells uh, your breast milk it tastes your skin and all this skin to skin time helps activate all these senses to help your baby breastfeed so when your baby is swaddled and brought to the breast just seconds before it feeds or time to latch on it can be really disorienting for your baby and your baby misses some of those really important essential cues to nurse and feed well so I really recommend um, not only in the hospital in that first hour but also in the days and weeks to follow to try to practice skin to skin three to four times per day about 20 to 30 minutes before feeding you know you don't have to be real rigid about this but um, it's just a wonderful way to connect with your baby and um, again the benefits are bonding health brain benefits and also breastfeeding So um, one other thing that, you know, you mentioned about skin-to-skin um, -skin time in that first hour, and that is a wonderful hour. We sort of call it the magic hour because babies are so awake right after they're born and alert, and it can be just a wonderful time to connect, make eye contact with your baby, but also to feed. Babies tend to feed well and um, they tend to latch on very well and we know the research has shown us that moms who breastfeed in that first hour actually um, that's associated with many um, good positive breastfeeding outcomes um, months to come so that hour right after birth spending time skin to skin and allowing your baby to feed is a wonderful time to take advantage of it um, and one thing that I think is important about that is because babies latch on well, it gives mom so much confidence that they can do this and that your baby can do this and you're a good team. Um, so in the days as your baby goes through some sleepy periods or maybe a little disoriented from being out in the world, um, it's really nice to have that first hour. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about the asymmetric latch. Okay, great. If we could do that, um, Sarah, if we can go ahead and go to the next slide, that would be wonderful. Um, we often, you may have heard, like, get a good latch, get a good latch, but sometimes we don't always know what that means. Um, the one thing that I would say, your baby really does know how to do this, and we just want to take advantage. So spending time skin to skin really promotes your baby getting a good latch. Um, but the other, there's a couple tips that I can give you to make this more successful. So we want your, um, your baby's belly to be lined up against yours, so belly to belly. Then I usually say nose to nipple. And then we want you to bring your baby in so the baby's chin touches the breast first with while the nose is sort of right in line with the nipple. And then when your baby's mouth opens up very wide, <laughs> snuggle your baby in very quickly um, to your body a little bit tighter so that they can get a deep latch. And we want the nipple to be way in the back of your baby's mouth near the soft palate so that there's no, um, so the baby's tongue isn't damaging the end of your nipple. So it's mm. really, really important uh, to get that. Um, That's great advice. I, I wish I would have had that. I, when the, the nurse put um, my son on to latch, she said, um, does this feel normal? And I thought, well, what does normal I feel like? like? It all feels so weird. It's very weird. So thank you it's for clarifying that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does feel weird. But the big thing is that it may feel weird, but it shouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that is really the point that I want to get across. If um, if you are having pain, that's not normal, and you should get help. Um, so ways to prevent it from hurting would be, um, number one, get a good latch. Get that good, deep, asymmetric latch. The other thing is to air dry your nipples after feeding or use a little breast milk or lanolin on your nipples after each feeding. It is normal, however, to have some discomfort, and I really do just mean discomfort. That's not a code word for pain. <laughs> um, it should be maybe it's normal for it to be a little um, have a little discomfort in the first seconds to couple minutes of feeding but that should go away and even that initial discomfort should totally be gone um, by the end of the first or second week so if that pain continues if you're having pain the whole time you're feeding your baby or in between feedings um, that's reason to get help 
if um, you have open sores or cracked or bleeding nipples, it sounds horrible. If you haven't breastfed, that sounds <laughs> horrible. But um, if you get to that point too, you really do need to seek some help. There's some quick things we can do um, to get those nipples healed and making sure your baby gets a good latch and get you back, back on track. But the sooner you get help, the better. Um, let's see. Let me give you um, maybe a few more tips that, uh, that can make breastfeeding go sort of smoothly those first few weeks. Um, we can go ahead and go to the next slide, Sarah. So the big thing, and this can be sometimes a shock, I think, for new parents, um, is to feed frequently. And just how frequently can be a little overwhelming. Um, but frequent uh, feedings as opposed to really long, long feedings um, are preferable. So we want frequent feedings. They help prevent sore nipples. Um, the frequent feedings also are really essential for bringing in your milk and for establishing a good supply. And the research has also shown us that moms who have a good abundant supply, if we get that, that whole system working in those first couple weeks, um, that's also associated with um, long-term positive breastfeeding outcomes. So the other benefit of breastfeeding frequently is it gives you lots of practice to get that, that latch. And we don't want you to settle for one that's painful. We want you to really work to get a good latch so that it's um, not only so that it doesn't hurt, but most importantly, so the baby is, is getting the, enough milk that the baby needs and we're establishing a good supply to support that baby's growth for, for the long term. Um, so how, what is frequently? Well, typically it's 8 to 12 feedings a day, so every, three, every 2 to 3 hours. But it's also not uncommon and totally normal um, to have 16 or more feedings a day. They may not all be what we would consider full feedings, but they, um, they might be sort of little snacks here and there. Um, but that is all really normal infant feeding behavior. And it's also why um, breastfeeding sort of needs to be your priority those first few weeks and really bring in support people uh, to help with some of the other aspects of baby care. So 16 feedings in 24 hours, Betsy. So that seems like a lot. And I do remember you when my son came home, I did feel like those first few weeks that I wasn't doing much besides feeding and changing him. Um, but could you just explain, because sometimes it gets confusing when you're sleep deprived, you don't really know what does that mean exactly, 16 feedings, and, and when do you start the clock, and how does all it all work? work? Absolutely. Right. Well, these are, these are some basics that are pretty important to know. I think sometimes um, we take for granted that, that parents already know this. But if you haven't breastfed before, you probably don't know this. Um, so let me just go over a few of these basics. Um, it's really, really important. Um, one of the fundamental aspects of your relationship with your baby is responding to your baby's needs. So we want you to recognize and respond to your baby's hunger cues the earlier the better. So what do those look like? They could That could be smacking or licking the lips. The baby would be doing that, opening and closing its mouth bringing their hands to the mouth, sucking on their lips, tongue, or fingers, that you might see the rooting reflex where um, they might be turning their head. If you stroke their cheek, they'll turn their head to that way, that way and um, have their mouth open wide. They might try to position themselves for nursing, so you might be holding them up on your shoulder and they'll try to sort of dive down or nurse on your shoulder. Um, you might notice they start to get fussy or breathing a little bit more rapidly. Those are all relatively um, early signs that your baby hu is hungry, and that's when we want you to go ahead and offer a feeding. The last sign would be crying, and it's very difficult to feed a baby who is upset and crying. So then you'll spend time trying to get the baby calm down before you nurse, and um, it, it's not the best way to try to nurse your baby. So if you can identify those cues early on, um, that'll help everyone stay calm and, and have a good feeding experience. The other thing, just some more basics, is we want your baby to finish the first breast that's offered before you switch to the other side. So allow your baby to completely drain or, or take as much as they want from the first breast. Might want to burp your baby and then offer the second. Sometimes they'll take it. They'll take the second one. Sometimes they won't. Some babies will only nurse on one side, um, and that, that may be true for many of their feedings. Most babies will take, um, many or most babies will take both sides. The other thing is in terms of timing, and this gets, <laughs> this gets a little <laughs> overwhelming. You time your feedings, regardless of how long the baby feeds, you time your feedings from the start of a feeding to the start of the next. 
Um, so if you're feeding your baby, if you have a baby who's nursing frequently and they eat about 12 times a day, um, it's not uncommon for a feeding to take a good 40, 50, 60 minutes when you include diaper changes and burping and go through that whole cycle. Um, so you would be feeding for an hour, you'd have an hour's rest when you're not feeding and then you would be feeding again. So from start of feeding to the start of the next. Um, and again, we just want um, your baby to be getting, eating at least uh, eight times a day. And that's for a newborn baby. That does tend to slow down a little bit depending upon um, the age and, and just the dynamic between the mom and baby um, as your baby gets a little bit older. But generally for a newborn, at least eight times a day. Thank you for clarifying that, Betsy. So now that we know that, how are we sure that our baby's getting enough milk or that the feeding is productive? Because um, they don't have a gauge on them that says when they're no. full. And Where so, is our app for right, that, right? right. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's a really, really common question. And in an information age where we have real-time data all around us, um, and all of a sudden we're being asked to just trust our instincts, trust our body, trust your baby, um, that can take that can take a little while to develop that trust. Um, but here are some good um, ways to tell when you've had a good feeling feeding those first uh, couple weeks. So if you're getting at least eight feedings in 24 hours, if you feel um, a deep, strong pulling sensation, that's usually sort of the sensation you get when your baby is really um, drinking milk. You'll feel that. It shouldn't be painful, but it, it's it's definitely a different sensation than you've probably had before. Um, once your milk is in, you'll probably hear swallowing. Um, so your milk will typically come in around day three or four, and that's when you should start hearing audible swallowing. If your baby is content after feedings, um, so you'll often see a content baby, instead of their arms being up near their face and with fists, their arms will then be relaxed and, and fingers are spread out. So that's a good way. If your breasts feel softer after feeding, if you see milk in the baby's mouth after the baby comes off your breast, if you have a letdown reflex, so when your milk is released um, into the ducts, you might have a tingling um, sort of pins and needles sensation in your breast. This usually happens a couple minutes after the baby's been sucking. Not all women feel this, um, but if you don't feel it, you may notice just a change in your baby's um, sucking rhythm. So at first it'll be very fast, and then after a couple minutes you'll see these longer sucks. And you may then hear the swallowing along with that. So that's a good sign that your baby is drinking milk. Also, one thing that you'll always be asked by a healthcare provider um, when talking about your baby's health is how many wet diapers and stools. What comes in must come out. <laughs> so we're looking by the end of the first week for at least six wet diapers a day and about three or four dirty diapers. In addition, we'd like to not see more than a 10% weight loss, so less than a 10% weight loss within those first few days of birth. It's normal for babies to lose a bit of weight, but we, want, we don't want it to be more than 10%, and we want them to have regained um, back up to their birth weight by the end of two weeks. That's great. Yeah, so Thank those you. are all sort of the basics. That's, that's great. Um, I think at this point we are ready for questions. Sarah, have you um, seen any questions come through? Great, yes. Thanks so much, Betsy. That was um, such helpful information, and it's always such a sign of a pro speaker and expert when you can condense it so succinctly like that. Right. So thank you so much for that, that great information. I have a couple of questions here for you. Um, I wanted to remind people that if they want to ask questions, the easiest way to do that is to actually post them as comments on our YouTube page. If you look to the right of the video, you can leave a comment and you'll see the couple of comments already registered there. And if you're watching this video archived after the event time, feel free to also still comment and leave questions and Nicole and I will do our best to get back to you with answers. Um, also earlier on in the PowerPoint, um, which we'll, we'll post up here later, you can see our email addresses and I believe we sent that out to everyone by email as well. So if you want to ask a question and don't want to do it publicly, feel free to email us. So going to the YouTube page, a couple of them here. Um, Betsy, Jessica asks, she has a question from a friend of hers who's a new mom. And she says, do you have any suggestions on how she can increase her supply? Do things like lactation cookies work? So um, this is sort of a big question and can really vary depending upon the circumstances. I guess what I would say first off is that this is a common fear um, that we don't have enough 
we don't we aren't making enough milk for our babies when in reality um, most women who are breastfeeding do a wonderful job of providing milk that's how our our bodies are made um, so sometimes what I would suggest is to make sure just ask some questions either to a healthcare provider or to a lactation consultant how do I know if I'm making enough milk One, some of the ways you can tell are by looking at those signs that I gave you signs of a good feeding also is your baby gaining weight appropriately if your baby's gaining weight in a way that your you know the child's healthcare provider is happy with then I think things are probably going just fine um, the other thing, however, you know, it's normal to have dips in our supply, whether it be from sickness, growth spurts, whole variety of factors can contribute going back to work. That's a big deal. Um, so it's good to have ways to um, quickly sort of bump up your supply if, if you feel like things are changing or if you just feel like you need a little bit more. The number one way is just to feed your baby more often. So add in a couple more feedings. Um, you should see a change in the supply within two to three days. If that isn't working, add in some pumping after feeding. So after you feed your baby, then pump for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, again, just like with the feedings, I prefer women to do that more frequently than for a longer duration. So rather than pumping for 20 to 30 minutes, I'd rather you just pump for 10 minutes two times. Um, and generally, those are the things that will quickly bump up your supply. If you still have concerns, I really would strongly recommend um, scheduling a consult with um, an IBCLC, a lactation consultant, or going to a breastfeeding support group. They can give you some tips. They can also do feeding test weights or just weigh your baby. Sometimes, again, it's just some reassurance um, and some little quick tips that can make a big difference. Great advice. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, I have another question here for you from Toddler Mom, who says, asks a question I think most of us um, that have breastfed uh, worry about in the beginning. You already touched on this, but maybe you could recap. How can I tell if my baby's latch is good? Right. So a couple things. Um, we want, uh, it shouldn't hurt. <laughs> Number one, it shouldn't hurt. Number two, um, we want both the up lip and bottom lip flared out. We want a wide open mouth. So one mistake that I see moms do probably most often is not is just let the baby sort of suck on with, with just this tiny little narrow uh, mouth. We really want that mouth open big and wide. Um, you shouldn't hear any funny clicking or popping sounds. You might hear swallowing. You might hear the baby sort of humming. Some babies are real noisy eaters. Um, those are normal sounds, but the clicking and popping isn't. Um, again, if it hurts, that's a good sign that it's not a good latch. Um, if your nipple is a funny shape when the baby comes off the breast, so if it's sort of wedge-shaped um, or triangular-shaped, if it doesn't look normal, that's a good sign the latch isn't normal. <laughs> um, so those are those are good ways. It really You just really have to get that nipple way far back in that baby's mouth. Great, thank you. Uh, we just had another question come in. This one is actually again from Jessica, and she said, uh, Betsy, can you talk about how to identify if you're dealing with a tongue tie or lip tie issue and how that impacts latching and nursing? You know, this is a hot topic um, right now, and um, I think the, the best advice I can give you is to talk to your health care provider, your baby's health care provider, and have them examine it. Um, is really sometimes it um, can really affect breastfeeding and other times it might not very much at all. So again, it, it sort of depends upon the mom-baby duo um, and also it's something that really needs to be evaluated and diagnosed by a healthcare provider. An ENT is also would be the next step. So if your um, healthcare provider or pediatrician identifies a tongue tie or lip tie, they will often refer you to um, an ENT who can, um, can talk about what the next steps are. Great, thank you so much. That looks to be the extent of our questions for right now. Um, again, I do want to encourage people, if you are just digesting all of this fantastic information from Betsy and think of questions later, please post them on our YouTube page and we would be happy to follow up. Um, so we're going to tell you just a little bit about our next event. Uh, and so I'm going to turn it over to Nicole and she can tell you what we have coming up on the schedule for May. 
Thank you, everyone, and, and thank you, Betsy. This was such great information that I, I wish I would have had an expert like you sitting next to me before I had my son. Um, so, so stay tuned, everyone, because we are going to have more great experts like this talking to us. Our next webinar is going to be May 5th, and it's going to be on back to work and breast pumping, which is also very important, I, and I think, as, as Betsy mentioned, getting your supply up, but then also keeping it up when you go back to work, because that could be a big a big thing. So our, our guest expert is going to be Ms. Michelle Schleibien. Schleiben, Schleiben, I think, right? Um, who is a certified lactation specialist at Lehan Drugs, which is a family-owned pharmacy in the Chicago area, and they're leaders in helping moms get the correct breast pump and storing them in, um, start supporting them. I'm sorry, in their breastfeeding journey. Michelle will fill us in on all the latest developments about insurance coverage on breast pumps, which has changed, um, how to choose the right breast pump that's for you, and um, tips for returning to work, and, and so much more. So, so follow us um, on our social media outlets. If you have not signed up for our email newsletter, please do so at this point, um, just to stay in the know, and, um, and, and we're excited to, to join you again for the, for the next event. Great. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Betsy and, and thank Nicole and thank everyone again that joined us. Um, it was really exciting that this is our, our debut event and we can't wait for this to be an ongoing series. Um, also encourage people if you want to post on the YouTube page with ideas for topics. We really want this to be relevant to you. So let us know what we can cover and um, what kinds of topics would be most useful. Um, I also wanted to share that uh, uh, through YouTube, because that's where we're broadcasting, it immediately archives this. So if you need to pause, rewind, go back, rewatch, um, see some of Betsy's great information again, uh, want to catch it later, you can do that. You also, because it's YouTube, can embed the link to the video. So if you happen to have a blog or a website, um, we would love for you to share this video series with your friends and family and any expecting or new moms that you think would find it useful. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and conclude our presentation. Thank you so much again for being with us here at Motherhood Uncovered, and we'll see you on May 5th. Thank you. <laughs>